Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, you do. Should I welcome. formally introduce myself? <laughs> I <can. laughs> well, whatever you want to do. You know, no, I'm um, Kristen Feely. I'm the deputy director of the documentary film program at Sundance Institute. And I have known you for going on seven years, um, but just am so delighted to be here right now talking about Hidden Letters. Um, such a fan. So I just, I have so many questions, but but just wanted to, to start um, by saying, you know, how moved I was. I, you know, though we've worked together and, and I've known, you know, a lot about the film as it's coming along, um, being able to see it on the big screen um, after a, a period of waiting um, just was such a beautiful experience. And it really reinforced for me, not only why the film is so incredibly timely, and speaks to a, just to every everyone, not just women, and not just women in China. Um, it's such a beautiful universal story that uh, I was saying earlier when we spoke that I feel like, you know, there are so few um, messages of empowerment, messages of hope, in what can feel like a particularly dark time politically, socially, and otherwise. And I just feel like your film is so needed right now on, on so many levels, but I'm just happy to be here to talk to you because I have questions about how it was made and the craft behind it. Um, because one of the other things that I loved so much uh, was how intentional every frame of the film is and how complete your vision is in, in making it. So I'm just really excited to talk to you more about that. Yeah, and I also wanted to say that I'm so glad you waited because I was like, one thing is that I want you to see on big screen and finally you did. I'm so happy about it. It took a lot of self-control. I'll say that <laughs> much. I was like, she'll know, she won't know, but you would know, you would know. So I, I just, uh, it was such a beautiful experience. Thank you for waiting. Yeah, so shall we, shall we dive in? Yeah, please, yes. All right, well, I hope you don't mind. I wanted to start. Um, because, you know, this film, I'll say it's early career for you as a director. It's not technically your first feature, but um, one of the things that I just wanted to kind of kick off by asking is, is, you know, I've known your work and your body of work as a producer. Like you've supported so many artists in China, in the U.S., um, and you've done incredible work. And I remember you telling me once, and not more than once, um, how this film, this film was so easy. And that kind of goes against the conventional wisdom of, of an early career director and, and, and also a film that's so deeply personal. So I just wondered if you could tell me a little bit more about when you say this film is easy for you, what you meant. Um, it's that I'm clear about what I want from this film. Um, and I'm clear about what are the questions that I wanted to ask and then guide myself. And I'm clear about um what I see of this film so like I mean for a really long time it it like it lives here and it's just like it's it was you know by the time that we have all the footage and then when it you know start editing and I can really see that it's going to be you know living as a movie um from my brain to that so in that sense I think that I think you know things change a lot during the making of this film but why I'm making this, well, what I want to do with this film has always been pretty consistent. So in that sense, it also is, has been clear for me to tell people what I want for this film and collaborators or people I, I pitch is, you know, going to founders. Um, so in that sense that it has been pretty consistent and, and easier in that way of knowing that what is the story I was going into um, at the beginning. But when did you know that you needed to direct it? <laughs> uh, when I feel so personally um, the sense of injustice. Um, and so when the film, when when Jean and Meta came to me and I know that it has to be about this, you know, because my sense of injustice is about what all, all of these women are experiencing. So it has to be about this. So the motivation and then the place that where I started um, was very clear even when they came to me was the project about you know uh, hundreds of years old secret language and I know that I need to find a way to point the camera into today and but that's you know 
I think that internal knowledge, it's that saying that you have to do it. Um, but then, you know, taking it on, um, forming these relationships with the women who become the kind of center of your film, um, that's a very delicate thing um, to, to step into. So, you know, what were some of the, like, in your, the clarity of your vision, you know, sometimes we make up rules or things that we know are really important to right. make the film that you want to make. What were some of your early on kind of rules or ideas of how this film had to be made? I know that it has to be about them. It has to be, I mean, from the very beginning, I know it has to be about them, their emotional journey. It's, it's going to be very internal because what I see is that, you know, there's a lot of injustice about women on the on the outside on the surface that's going on in the world right now you know be it the me too movement or you know the abortion rights and all of those it's like policy that you can change but what's ingrained in ourselves is something that I was you know struggling with myself and I know that every woman that I'm around with is struggling and that's that's more fundamental to me to me that that's even more important of how much we can challenge ourselves to unroot that kind of narrative that's building in us and I know that that's what I was going to go in one thing that I do feel very conscious about and I I, I felt with myself was this and I want to be very aware of it is how much is this what I want to say of you know like through them or how much is what they want to say and I want to be very aware of that difference, if there is any. And I don't want to just to, you know, like I, I constantly ask myself because there are so many people who's already exploiting you, Shu. And at the end of the day, am I doing that too? And I definitely don't want to. And how do I make sure that I'm not doing that while that making sure that what I wanted to say is also um, have a common ground with what what the subjects want to say, and also be really aware of what they wanted to express, what they wanted to say, what their struggle that might be different from mine is, and how do I carve out space for that to come come through? And yeah. I mean, that's that's not easy to do in a way to have that kind of self awareness, but still hold your vision. And so maybe we can talk about how that plays out across the making of the film. But at the beginning, you know, how did you hold yourself accountable? when you were getting to know these women and, and also learning, I'm imagining learning new shoe at the same time. Well, I think it's a very, a lot of doubts of myself, um, which I think it's not uncommon as a female filmmaker. Like we all do that. And at the end of the day, you know, I start to embrace it because, you know, those are the doubts that really um, make people to trust me. Um, and, you know, I was also really honest with sharing those doubts with my subjects as well. And that's, you know, that kind of space is very much what new show provided for the woman also, you know, like, how do we honestly share how we feel towards each other? And I think that's also making it the space that my subjects also were able to communicate with, with us, you know, not just me, but my co-director who's my cousin in such a way. And did you actually, I'm curious if you learned new shoe or kind of even had a, com a dialogue within the language or in some way with the women in your film did you learn that as you went with, you I, know? I couldn't because it's it's based on the local pronunciations of these particular villages so like people from outside of these villages will have no way to read it um so you can rely on the dictionary to translate that particular character under the context of that poem what it means in corresponding to classic Chinese or Chinese. Um, so it's it's really, it's almost impossible for anybody outside of the village to learn the language. So you really then needed these women? Yeah, but what I did is that I, you know, I know that there is a lot of reinterpretation of new shu and all that. There's a lot of publications about the secret language that was published much later. So what I did is that I went to the earliest original record of how these poems were found. And, you know, and then those, you know, publications were translated. So I, I just immersed myself in all these writings that these women did in the very beginning. And it was like, it's not that many because most of the writings were burned when they died and the records that they could find are not that many, but I try to go to the earliest records of pe what people can find. 
Oh, no, that that is such an it's such an interesting process in a way, both to identify, you know, as as Simu does in the film, but really identify the women, you know, that you're having a direct dialogue with and, and then build around that. So I'm, I'm curious how you as you began to build your team with you, um, you know, because you're translating and you're experiencing the women's experience that you're you're connected with but then you have to build a team around you to do the same. So could you share a little bit of how you built your own creative team? I think just, there's a lot of instinct, you know, like Jean and Meta came to me at the very beginning when we started this journey. And, you know, both of them are like sisters to me. And I don't know how Meta and I have this trust, but I remember the first time she called me and she said, you know, it come out from my mom, who's from Shanghai. She read this book and then about Nushu. And she really wanted me to make a film. And she's half Chinese, half Norwegian. And she said, would you want to do it with me? And then she said, I can only find limited funding from Norway. So I'm happy just to be a co-producer. And I said, Meta, if you're doing this with me, even though we haven't met, you are a producer on this. And we're going to do this together. And despite of how much money you raise, and since then on, it's a full collaboration and we run ideas to each other very, very often. And she just like so supportive of me that she becomes somebody that I can really, when I get frustrated, even on other projects, you know, like somebody that we, I mean, we call like three times a week. So, and, you know, like by the time we see each other in person at IFA, we were already like family. So I think that's something. And then also like, with my editor, John, um, he's the only editor I went to because I loved his work before, especially Funny Yin Yin and that sensibility. And I'm like, I see this guy. We had the first call and, and I shared some footage with him. And he said, you're hiding treasures from me. And he started to ask questions about why I shot it this, this way. And then she, he started already answering my questions, you know, the question he want to ask me. And it just feeling that it's such, you know, connection that from the first time and, you know, like we didn't see each other in person until Fine Cut when I flew him <laughs> to New wow. York. But that was like, and, I think that he can also tell you that we I booked him for three weeks in New York. I released him for two and a half weeks and then we're like, we're done. <laughs> never That's amazing. Yeah. And like, you know, like I felt like there's a lot of stress and anxiety for people when you don't know them and all that, especially when you work remotely. And I was hearing a lot of people telling me to do, you know, the cloud system of high tech or whatever. And we started talking and we're like, do we need that? And then he's like, no, Dropbox link. I say, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, I mean, we did nothing, like nothing like high tech, but it was just like so easy, you know, working back and forth. And, and yeah, I, I felt like I'm really, really lucky to have that kind of trust from my team. Well, I, I think it, it is created and, and nurtured and, and is also related to what you want to communicate with the film. So I think it's, it's interesting how, you know, the idea of sisterhood or partnership that's so central to the film extends into the, into the making of it. And, and, and just along those lines, since we're talking about John and talking about the editing process, um, you know, I have a couple of questions, but I'm curious for you because your vision, you said, was so clear. Um, if you had, you know, either other, you know, cinematic reference points or films in a way that when you think about this film, like informed or inspired the way that you wanted to tell it? Uh, I, I kept thinking, you know, like the first image that when Hu Xin was walking in the field, I kept thinking, you know, from the first time I went to the village that I, I, I kind of, I kind of see that it's kind of the same opening as Johnny Mo's My Father and Mother uh, film. And it was just like so go gorgeously shot. And I, I was thinking about Hu Xin walking through the field. I didn't say anything. It was actually brought up by my DP. And, you know, because we also build that kind of like understanding and trust. And, you know, we we're talking about how do we visually 
help people to understand her presence in this really gorgeous, you know, village. And so he also brought it up. He brought it up the same film, <laughs> like, yes, let's do this. Um, yeah, I, I don't feel like other than that, I have that much visual reference, but I, you know, we did talk a lot about how do we kind of film details in a way that it's beautiful, but also shows suppression of what these women's contacts were. Um, and, you know, like, it's also really interesting going through that process with John in the editing room. Same as, you know, what I mentioned about the animation as well, because, you know, we intentionally took out all the animation to tell the backstory because it's romanticizing these women's experiences. We had so many gorgeous shots of these villages. Oh my God, it's like unbelievable shots. We didn't use any of those in the film because it also doesn't ground people of the sense of, you know, what these villages means to these women, you know, like beautiful, like dragonfly, you know, picking water from leaves, you know, like shots like this, it was so beautiful. But, and I, I remember talking with John, I was like, why don't we reduce those shots? John's like, it, it doesn't say anything. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, he's right. So yeah. Anyway, and I also think that, you know, like, it's not just John, it's also, you know, this collaboration goes beyond to everybody on this team, like Chad, who did the music. And I still remember, like, you know, like, as a woman, we're very aware and conscious of, like, whether we say is right or not. And, like, you know, when we're giving music notes, and sometimes I was like, you know, John, what are you thinking? And then Chad would be like, don't be afraid. I can take anything. Just tell me what you think. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, it's hard as, as someone who knows you, it's like, I know that you're, you know, deeply, you're musical, you have a musical talent. And that was something that I think sometimes for, for composers working with directors, it's like dangerous when someone knows a little bit, you know, they like they're, they know enough just to be dangerous in the process, but I feel like you bring, um, and what was so beautiful in the film was the musicality. Yeah. Of the pacing. And that's of the a lot of it is also John. John is also really, really musical as well. It comes through in such a beautiful way. But just, just to also say one of the other things that I loved and when you were talking about the shots that you chose was, you know, they you picked certain tableaus so that the viewer could really sit with each image and sit with the complexity because you could say, well, you know, this woman bending down in the stream is quite beautiful, but then you have to take in, well, what is she doing? And, and you know, how is she, you just, I felt the length that you held the shot, what you allowed us to sit with gave us beauty, but it also gave us a sense of, of the, the length and the duration of their work and life and you know that things aren't simply just one dimensional so it was yeah and I also wanted to give a lot of credit to my co-director who's my cousin I think that you know like when we decided to work together I didn't feel like I was as confident as a director at all and I also know her strengths very well because we work on film together she isn't I mean she's the opposite of me that I have concept in my brain of what I want to say um, she going to scenes with nothing in her brain. That's why she sees so much more a lot of times than me um, and just let it in, immerse. Um, so I think that's, that also adds so much value to, you know, like the scenes when we saw that Simu and her fiance were sitting together and that was, you know, all shot by her with uh, another DP, you know, like, yeah. So I think that we complement each other very well. Um, was this film? Well, that uh, it, I there's so much to say about about each element, and you know, but I I do um I do want to ask you because you're talking about you know your co-director who happens to be your cousin, <laughs> um and and I'd love to know um a little bit more about that collaboration, um and you worked together in the past, so so how did you kind of um. And knowing that, you know, she is in China, you are here, but like what you feel you each bring in the process and kind of how, yeah. Um, I think she's very strong in following characters, like what I said about um, the value in that. And, you know, like with me, especially when this is still my first theatrical um, film that 
at least the first few shoots that I was actually anxious about whether I'm getting the thing, you know, whether I, I, I know how to direct on set and all of that. And he grounded, she grounded me in that kind of way that don't worry, it's going to be fine. And, um, but it's also a process of, it's very interesting because I think at the beginning of the process, I kind of rely on her more. And then throughout the process, I came out much stronger as a director. And I said, okay, we do have differences on understanding the approach and vision of this film. And at the end, we had lengthy conversations. Um, and I said, okay, so this is a film about my voice. Um, and in the end, I think that I need to give it a chance. So are you okay to support? She said, yes, I understand. Um, you know, like we might have some different opinions, um, but I will do my best to film what you want. And it was until we put together the cut and I showed it to her, she said, no, I understand. So it came out in a full circle in a beautiful way that, you know, like, it's also like, you know, for Please Remember Me, it was her first feature and I very much supported her through that process. And I feel like this project, she also supported me in that same way. And at the end, we're both really happy with the work. That's so, it speaks beautifully of your collaboration because that it is a film changes and, and you change in the process of making it, but how you give each other space is really right. what matters. So I, I just want to keep on this, this theme of family for a second, because um, as again, as someone who knows you, um, I was so touched um, by the last shot of the film. Um, which, you know, to anyone who might not know you, you just see a shot of a beautiful little girl looking at the camera. But for those that know you, they know that that's your daughter, Millie. Um, and I, I just was curious to know, because you, you know, she, she, she also collaborates in the film. She's present. Um, but this film is deeply personal for you. So I, I was really curious for you as a mother, what you wanted to communicate to her by making this film? I mean, essentially this film for me is beautiful, is made for her. Um, you know, it's, I mean, as Chinese, we don't, we're, I feel like I, I constantly feel that, that I don't feel my parents communicate that much emotions to me because we're Chinese culturally and we don't really talk about intellectual stuff that much either and it kind of forbid me from having that kind of communication with my daughter also in a lot of ways because we're so Chinese but I hope that you know I think right now what she sees this film is that she's the star of the show and her mom is great filmmaker and then she even told me today that her her teacher was asking them what their dream job is and then she said my actual dream job is to build a uh, animal sanctuary for wild animals that needs rescue but she said but I also really want to be a di film director like you they say you can do both so I think that she get that sense of pride which is great but I hope like down the road, she will be able to dissect her own gender roles, even though she will have a lot of freedom than me, um, but at least to see where women come from, where her mom comes from in a society and what it means for us to have her in this you know, space. Not necessarily mean it's better, but at least to give her more context to have conversations about this particular thing and about who she is as a woman that she's going to be. Oh, she wants to. Well, it's a, a beautiful gift to to have that and to be able to even talk about it through making art and through you know how you found your voice in the making of this film and and how she in turn can continue to do that with what she she chooses to do in her future. So, I hope so. I hope so. And I mean, in 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 terms of the future, you know, I'm I'd love to know what you what you've learned in the making and, and you've been taking the film to audiences, you've been getting a lot of responses and you know what the film gives so I was saying before, it, give, it gives me so much hope. Um, and I'd love to know what in the responses that you've gotten as you've shown the film has given you hope 
Yeah, I think that I don't have hope yet until I really see how this film can help people in China and help people elsewhere. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna push myself hard on it because that's why we make films and it's the most important thing, not awards, not anything else. Um, yeah, and you know, I was very clear about that when we did the impact campaign with Please Remember Me, I was like, that's why I'm making films. So um, yeah, but I also know that there's so much you can do um, and it's one day at a time kind of thing. Um, so I don't know, I, I don't have goals right now, even for my career, even for my profession. I don't feel like I'm a goal oriented person anymore. I feel like it's what's important to me is um, to be creatively challenged and to, you know, be sustainable in a way, hopefully. And also that finding a way for the film to have every film that I make to have impact. And that's what I care about. So, I mean, we just, we just have to push and then see what I can do. But, you know, I'll also take any outcome that um, whatever it is. I think that's the it's it's early in its life, but still, you know, the outcome is is ongoing. Um, yep. But just all right, along those lines, then, you know, what in the making or in this process right now um, has surprised you, has surprised you about yourself, about the film? Um, you, you as a director. Um that I actually feel really embarrassed of how people like the film. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know. But I, I mean, what surprised me also is that I start to see um, that I'm gaining so much more confidence in it. But I'm also surprised to see that I'm started to embracing all those doubts that I have of myself. Um, you know, I learned how to leash those. Um, <laughs> it's there and I'm not gonna push it away, um, but I know how to leash it. And, you know, when I need it, I'm gonna take it out and then look at myself um, and to check on those doubts that I have, which I think it's necessary also. That's, I, I took that from you. <laughs> we talked about it, that is, it's such a powerful um, uh, sense of ownership especially as women, um, that we understand that these doubts um, don't have to be undermining us or, or taking something away from us, but that it was such a powerful idea that you can harness it and that it's yours and that it makes you stronger because what this requires to do this work, to make art, to make films is a level of vulnerability that is a strength. So it's yeah. one of the most powerful things that I you know, took away from knowing